So you've met Oscar and you've spent a bit of time with him, but you still feel like you're only just scratching the surface. What are all those bars, numbers, and wobbly lines? Well, if that's you, then stick around because I'm going to help you decipher and decode your data so you don't get discomosculated. Coming up. Now, if any of you are yet to install Oscar or set up a profile, then we've done a video for you going step by step on how to do it. Just click the card above me, or there's a link in the description below, and then you can hop back over here when you're done. Because from here on, I'm going to assume you have your profile on Oscar open and your data uploaded and ready to analyze. Right, so with your profile set up, it's time to look at the three icons on the right hand side that will be active. The one furthest to the right brings up the statistics window. In here, you will find two panels. The top panel summarizes some core statistics in the following groups, usage, efficacy, leak stats, and pressure settings. These stats are totaled over five different timescales, most recent, last week, last 30 days, last six months, and last year. This panel can be used to provide a quick snapshot of core data and how it is changed by comparing broad periods of use. Below this panel is one that shows dates when changes were made to your prescription settings, the number of days you've used those settings, and the AHI index during that period. This info can be helpful for evaluating the effectiveness of the changes made to those settings. The next icon, one to the left of statistics, takes you to the overview window. This window presents data for each night in the form of bars. Now, some of those bars indicate the levels of that day, for example, the pressure or CPAP usage, and some show the start, stop, and duration of something, such as your session times. The overview window can be used to provide a day-by-day -day snapshot of your data, rather than looking at specific periods in the statistics window. So it can be useful to compare overviews of specific days with others perhaps because you've changed your therapy settings, or maybe you've changed masks, or if you just want to compare them for the sake of it. But the main window, the one that gives a breath-by-breath -breath analysis of your sleep, is the daily view window, which is accessible via the icon in the middle. Here you will get a minute-by-minute -minute breakdown of your sleep for the day selected, across a huge range of data points. Although you'll probably only need to pay attention to a few of the key bits of data from this. But first, you should select the date, month, and year you want to view from the calendar on the left. If the date on the calendar is black, then that means that there was no data on the SD card for that date. But if it is blue, then there is data to view. Under the calendar, there will be some overall statistics from that day, and a chart that gives a breakdown of the nighttime events. And talking of events, the top track contains event flags to signal a time when there was an event. If you hover the cursor over any event, a small pop-up will list the type of event and its duration in seconds. The track also provides a very helpful way to focus on the data that you are most likely to be interested in. If you highlight an area of that track, the data in the charts below will focus on that time period. And if you left click or push up, the time period will zoom in. And if you right click or press down, it will zoom out. Right and left arrows will scroll left and right too. Now, as I mentioned, there are lots of tracks that show up here, each for a different measurable. For a full explanation of what each of those mean and how to read what's going on here, go to the link in the description. But to get you started, I'm going to talk you through a few things to look for in the main ones and what they will tell you. So all the analysis pretty much will start with the flow rate. The flow rate shows the airflow in and out of your lungs. Any flow above zero is inhalation and below zero is exhalation. So your breathing pattern shows up here in the waveform and events are marked in it too. A normal breathing pattern will be uniform with stable peaks and troughs like this. You can use this chart to look at what happened where there are event flags and to determine what kind of issue may have caused it. As the flow rate shape in conjunction with other data that you can see on the tracks can provide a good indication of what went wrong. For example, a flow rate that shows a gradual reduction of airflow, both inhalation and exhalation, followed by a sharp recovery spike like this, is a clear sign of positional apnea or chin tucking. Whereas a normal expiration that suddenly cuts off to zero suggests a case of palatal prolapse, which is when the 
soft palate closes off the airway entirely. And if you see long and regular periods of football shaped patterns, especially if they are flagged with CA, which stands for clear airway, that might be a period of chain stokes respiration, which is an associated with heart disease and central sleep apnea. And if you want to learn more about that, then click the card above me. Also, it's worth checking out those event flags and other anomalous patterns that aren't flagged. For instance, if you have an apnea event flagged, but it doesn't fit a typical apnea pattern with flow restriction occurring in the buildup, it could be that you woke up and resettled for a different reason. If the leak rate went up, and if the mask pressure starts fluctuating, it could be a case of mouth leak that caused arousal rather than an actual obstruction of your airway. In such cases, you can dismiss these events. On the flip side, there can be times when the flow rate makes clear that a hypopnea or rera occurred, but it wasn't flagged. Check out the video in the card and description if you don't know the difference between these events. What you're looking for is a restriction in the airflow, perhaps coupled with a simultaneous rise in the flow limit track followed by a short period of stronger arousal or recovery breathing. By looking more closely at your flow rate alongside some of the other tracks, you can get a better idea of your actual AHI index rather than just relying on one that the algorithm assigns to you. Checking your data for yourself up close is especially important if your AHI seems low, but you're still suffering from sleeplessness symptoms. So I know this has been a bit of a quick blast through some of the things to look out for, but hopefully it can give you a bit of an idea about the power of Oscar and getting familiar with your data. I know it can sometimes feel like drinking from a fire hose with all this information, but digest it. There's a lot of great websites out here that can help deep dive into this stuff as well. But if you want personal and expert advice, give us a call and we'll do our best to help you. And until next time, friends, keep checking your data and sleep tight. Bye-bye for now.